Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail Francis Scott Key. This is the story of a great contribution to the history of our country, a contribution which has been an inspiration to Americans everywhere, at home, at sea, abroad, and in or out of uniform. Today we speak of Francis Scott Key in our national anthem, The Star-Spangled Banner. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Here is a message for you young women who have just graduated from high school. There is a future for you in Air Force Blue. Yes, an important future in the exciting places of the world. Today, the WAF, Women in the Air Force, is rapidly expanding to keep pace with our defense needs. If you are between the ages of 18 and 34 and can qualify, enlist in the WAF, Women in the Air Force, and join the many patriotic American women who are serving their country on the Air Force team. You are needed to fill an important job in the service of your country. So visit your United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Have a talk with a recruiting sergeant and learn all the facts. Remember, there's a future for you in Air Force Blue. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Symbol of Freedom. In times of crisis, the people of our nation have risen to heroism, to great self-sacrifice, and to the loyal performance of their duties. A gifted few have left their mark on our history in other ways. Our story is based on incidents in the life of a great American whose poetic verses were inspired in a time of national crisis. Poetic verses which have become a guide, a hope, and a prayer for the defenders of freedom throughout the world. It is 1814. The war with England is in its second year. The enemy is marching on Washington. A small gathering is taking place in the home of the well-known Georgetown lawyer, Francis Scott Key, and his wife, Polly. Yes, Polly, I'm here. Oh. oh. Francis, what is it? Why are you in here like this, alone? I've, I've been thinking. This war... Not thinking, Francis. You are brooding. It is not brooding. The enemy marches on the Capitol. The military organization seems to be completely falling apart. Everywhere I go, I find complete apathy, complete disinterest. Where is our national spirit? What are our leaders doing? the country feeling the way it does, well, we're, we're being ripened for defeat. I don't see... What did you want, Polly? Oh, my dear, dear. I can't have you thinking unpleasant thoughts. And your tone. Polly, Polly. It's so abrupt and so... Come here, Polly. It's so like I'm a jury or a witness. I'm your wife, remember. You're not supposed to... Mm. See, I reserve those kisses for no jury. <laughs> well, now I've forgotten what I came for. Oh, no, uh, Francis, Judge Nicholson's leaving. So soon? Yes. He wants to speak to you in the hall a moment. I'll go right away. Polly? Yes, Francis? These are upsetting times. My Francis, they won't upset us. I know it. Now go. Go and see the judge. He's in the front hall. I will. <laughs> and you owe me the next dance. Oh, 
leaving so soon, Judge. Yes, Francis. Well, the party isn't over yet. I really wish I could stay. It isn't often we can get together nowadays. True, but I do have some briefs and things to read before I retire now. I hope we haven't kept you. No, no. This all-too-short evening of charming music and pleasant people has renewed me. It was what uh, one may call stimulating relaxation. There, that's it. Stimulating relaxation. <laughs> Uh, uh, Judge, you told Polly you wanted to speak to me about something. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Francis, it's about Polly. I'm worried about her. Now, I don't want this to sound too serious, but it is serious enough for us to speak of it. After all, we did marry the finest pair of sisters in the world. <laughs> granted, Your Honor, granted. Uh, uh, Francis, Polly seems nervous and drawn and... Uh, well... I haven't helped any, I guess. I, I've been short with her. Oh, no, no. This has nothing to do with you two as people. In fact, as man and wife, you're rightfully the honest envy of all who know you. Well, go on then, Judge. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, not at all. Uh, Francis, I believe that with the fighting and danger getting closer every day, well, Polly must understandably be worried about the children and you. But she... I know, uh, I know. She wouldn't show it to you under any condition. And I think if she took the children and went to Frederick to stay with your parents, they would be safer there and things would be better for everyone concerned. That's just it, Judge. I've tried to get her to leave, but, but she won't go unless I do. We've had countless arguments about just that. Well... It hasn't done our tempers any good. Some of these arguments are very heated. Of course, of course. She insists that if Dolly Madison can stay in Washington with her husband, then she is going to stay here with me. It's her, her duty, she says. Well, Polly is a fine, loyal woman. That is not the question. However, the burden, Francis, is on you, and it is not a pleasant burden. Polly and the children are in danger here. You simply must convince her to go. You simply must, and without delay. I know it. And you know how I've tried. Yes, but you must convince her this time. Uh, I'll do the best I can, Judge, but you know, Polly has a mind of her own. Yes, what woman doesn't? Well, I must be on my way. Is the big conference over yet? Oh, uh, yes, Polly, and I must say good night. I'm sorry you're leaving, Judge. And I am, too. And now then, uh, good night, and thank you for a wonderful evening. Good night again. Good, good night, night, Judge. Polly. You still owe me a dance, dear husband. But it's too late now. Everybody's getting ready to leave, so you help me say good night. Polly, I must talk to you. All right, Francis. All right, but not right now, please. Well, Francis, my friend, a really wonderful party. Thank you, Captain. My dear Polly, it was lovely. I'm so glad. Thank you. Good night. Well, good night again. Good night. Good night. Polly. I'm going up to bed. I must talk to you. I'm so tired, Francis. Let it wait till morning. I'm tired, too. All right, we're both tired. We shouldn't. Yes, we should, and we're, we're going to talk about it this very minute. Polly, my mind's made up. You will leave with the children tomorrow. Oh, Francis, not this again. Yes, this again, but this is the final time. You and the children will go to Frederick and stay with my parents, and you will leave no later than tomorrow. Francis, I belong here with you. A wife's place is with her husband. And I tell you, you can't stay here any longer. As long as what others... What others do is none of our business. Other wives are staying here. There's no reason why I shouldn't. Oh, yes, there is. Plenty of reasons. It doesn't make any sense. It certainly does. Well, I can't see it. It's just too dangerous oh, here. Oh, dangerous, dangerous. <laughs> Good heavens. Yes, dangerous. If not for us, at least for the children. The children are a part of us. And their safety... As a part of us, they have the right to share our dangers. You give them no choice. Uh, uh... I'll open it. Francis, Polly. Richard West. What's wrong? What's happened? Dr. Beans has been taken prisoner. No, oh, no. no. Yes. Oh, my breath. He's been... Uh, Polly, dear, uh, brandy for Richard. Yes, right away. <sighs> Richard, get your breath. I ran. Hey, come, come. We'll go in here and sit down. All the way. <sighs> Where were you? Oh, at least 20 different places. I've spoken to everyone there is to speak to. Uh, about Dr. Beans? Yes, and what to do, of course. And how to go about it. Uh, here, uh, sit down there. Thank you. Now, from the beginning. Well? I didn't spill a drop. Here, Richard. Thank you. I'd better take that first. I will. Uh, well, all we know, and it's been verified, 
is that Dr. Beans was suddenly seized and taken prisoner out to the British fleet in the harbor. When did this happen? Late this afternoon. Well, how? Under what conditions? We don't know. No one seems to know too much about well, that. How was the seizure verified? By friends. In answer to an official query, the enemy sent a terse note back saying simply that Dr. Beans is in our custody. Nothing else? Nothing else. Hmm. What would they want an old man like Dr. Beans for? What possible reason? Poor old Dr. Beans. Is anyone doing anything to help him? That's why I'm here, Francis. Here? Yes. I've been delegated to ask you to obtain his release from the enemy. Of course, Richard, certainly. I knew we could count on you. I'll do everything I can to help him. Good. I'll have to call on Mr. Madison. I need his permission before I go on any such venture. Whatever you say, Francis. Mm. Yes, Richard. Can't promise anything, but I'll, I'll try to see the president first thing in the morning. Good. Ah, that was just what I needed. Thank you, Polly. I should think so, Richard. Here, I'll take the glass. Thank you. Now, Francis, I'd better be going. Sorry it was so late. Oh, no, that, oh, no. that's all right. We were still up. I sort of lost track of time. The nature of an emergency has no relation to time. Seems to work out that way. No sleep on a battlefield, we must remember. That's certainly true. Richard, I should know something by noon tomorrow. I hope so. In any case, I'll get word to you. Fine. Good night. God bless you. Good luck. Good, Good night, night, Richard. <sighs> well. Francis. Yes, dear. Francis, I, I know you've been under a great strain. Uh, we both have, my dear. A terrible strain. And I have been a little too stubborn. No, you've been wonderful. No, no, I haven't, Francis. Polly. I haven't been reasonable. I haven't meant to be so harsh. Maybe, maybe a little vacation wouldn't do me any harm. What do you think? My Polly. That's my answer. I'll leave with the children for Frederick tomorrow. But you remember, I'm always with you. That thought, I will remember. And remember. And remember. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production of Symbol of Freedom. We'll return to our story in just a moment. You know, times have certainly changed. Just a few short years ago, women were completely left out of this man's world. But today, in more and more instances, women are proving that they can assume the role of skilled technicians in positions once thought of as solely for men. Now, a case in point is aviation. Today, in our rapidly expanding Air Force, women are taking their places alongside men as cartographers, control tower operators, cryptographers, and dispatchers. And these are but a few of the vital services now being performed by the women in the Air Force. If you are between the ages of 18 and 34 and can qualify, Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. Ask about the WAF, women in the Air Force. They need you now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Symbol of Freedom. <laughs> a dozen different offices all morning. Each interview helped prepare me for my mission to obtain the release of Dr. William Beans from the enemy. But now I stood before the reception desk, which would, if necessary, lead me to an interview with President Madison. I knew the president's permission was needed, but I also knew that in times like these, he would be involved in much heavier matters than the release of a single prisoner. The clerk at the desk glanced up from a mass of papers. Uh, you will excuse my not attending to you sooner, sir, my desk has apparently become a crossroads for messages from everybody to everybody. <laughs> I can well understand, sir. My name is Key, Francis Key, and early this morning I submitted a written request for a brief moment with the president to ask his... Key, uh, Key. Ah, yes, you're the lawyer, Francis Key. I have here a notation from the president's office which says immediate permission has been granted for your project. And it's excellent. Yes, and in addition there is a... a Colonel John S. Skinner, signed to accompany uh, you. Who is he, sir? He is a government agent from the department which handles prisoner of war exchanges. I see. If you will pardon me, Mr. Key, I believe this is he coming now. Oh, Colonel Skinner. Yes. Uh, 
Colonel John S. Skinner, Mr. Francis Key, Colonel Howdy. Skinner. How do you do, Colonel? I'm pleased to know you, Mr. Key. Now, if you're ready, we can leave this very moment. Yes, Colonel, I'm ready, but uh, first I'd like to match my information with yours. Oh, certainly, certainly, Mr. Key. I've been informed that Dr. William Beans was seized because he caused some trouble for an enemy group, and that whether he's a legitimate prisoner of war or not is debatable. Well, that, I believe, is to be considered by yourself as a lawyer. Well, that's about all, except that I am to accompany you to make the venture completely official. Well, substantially, that is correct, Colonel. Dr. Beans is alleged to be responsible for the capture of a group of enemy marauders. Whether or not he is responsible for this is not a particular point for us to discuss with the British. Our point is that, as a civilian, he is not a legitimate prisoner of war and cannot be detained. Many of us have become interested in his case because he's a dear friend, a fine man... Much too old to be imprisoned or persecuted. It's clearer to me now, Mr. Keith. Uh, where is uh, Dr. Beans being held at present, Colonel? He's on the Admiral's flagship. That's our first destination. If we are successful, then all three of us will be processed through the cartel ship Minden. This ship is used for prisoner exchange purposes, Mr. Keith. I see. Then uh, we may leave right now, Colonel? Right now. Oh, uh, Mr. Key, I'd like to... Well, you see, with things as they are out in the harbor... With an attack on Fort McHenry possible any day, any moment, we may not know what we're getting into. There is perhaps danger. My task is clearly outlined in my mind. Good. Oh, uh, one more thing. Since we, well, I prefer, I'd like it very much if you drop the colonel and call me John. <laughs> With all my heart, John. And I'm Francis. My hand, Francis. And mine, John. Dr. Beans, John and I have just learned we're all being held aboard this cartel ship for an indefinite period. Well, I, I don't understand it. We, we don't either. What do you think, John? It looks like the attack on Fort McHenry might begin at once. Yes, but what has that to do with us? Our papers are in order. That's right, Dr. Beans. But there are two possible reasons. One is that we're not to run any risk getting back to shore while we're under British responsibility. The other I can think of is that perhaps we may be too much aware of what is going on we might have information which can be used against the British. Well, there may be some truth in both these theories. Anyway, we're under a Marine guard who has orders not to let us go till the battle is over. Oh, well, that means the attack must be about to begin. You may be right. Quite right. Francis, my boy, I, I don't know how to... Uh, how to thank you and John here for coming to my rescue as you did and letting yourselves into the middle of a possible battle. Oh, not at all, Dr. Bean. We've got, to, got to help each yes, other. Yes, yes, I know, but I had just about given up all hope, and then you arrived aboard the Admiral's flagship. Well, it's only a matter of making the proper representation. I'll never forget it, son. Never. Huh. You'll be all right, Doctor. Yes, why don't you go below? Rest. I, I think I will. Well, fine. We'll join you later. Later, then. Uh, I'll get some rest. Francis. The British are preparing to fire on Fort McHenry. What do you mean, John? Well, we've known ever since they moved into the harbor that they would eventually. Of course. Well, I hope they're delaying. It hasn't fooled our men ashore, as though it were only a threat. Well, I hope they're ready. Yes, I do too. Because this battle is a decisive one. I wish the rest of the country were as prepared as Fort McHenry. Not enough of our people realize we're... Well, we're fighting for our very existence. John... What makes you think so positively that the attack is about to begin? Well, as far as I could see, all decks have been cleared. Rounds of shot and open powder kegs are being neatly stacked near every cannon. All dress uniforms have disappeared. This is no practice maneuver. It looks like the real thing. Mm. Fort looks small from here. Maybe because it's getting dark. It's a strong fort, all right, Francis. It won't fall easily. Those brick walls are set in oyster shell mortar, 14 feet high and 35 feet thick. Francis, look. Look, going up over the fort. A flag. Look at that, John. The wind is flashing around. What a beauty. A red, white, and blue symbol of our, our country's fight for freedom. That's it. They're firing on the fort. Coming below, Francis. Francis. You can't stay up here on deck all night. Coming below. Francis. 
I'm staying here. Oh, you'd better get some rest. No, John. But you'll need it. God alone knows what tomorrow may bring. As long as I can see the flag over the fort, I know we haven't lost the battle. But it's pitch dark now. I can see. But you can't see anything from here. The light of the rockets over the fort show me if the flag is still flying. Well, do as you please, Francis. But I'm going below. Call me if anything happens. Good night, Francis. Everyone could see this great moment now. Dawn coming up over Fort McHenry, the smoke and mist clearing for a moment. The light of a new day. Our flag. The flag is still there. I've been standing here through the night watching, hoping, praying while my country fights for its beloved freedom. If there were only some way to preserve this moment forever, deep, deep in the hearts of my countrymen. Ah, here, back of this old letter. I'll write about it. I'll try to tell them what happened this night. Oh, say, can you see? By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave? Come in, come in. Good to see you back, Francis. I thought I'd uh, drop over to welcome you home. <laughs> Fine. Come in and sit down a bit. Uh, no, thank you. Can't stay but a moment. I want to tell you how everyone is talking about the splendid job you did on the Dr. Beans case. It's in all the newspapers, and it's the major subject of conversation in all Washington. Rescuing the old doctor when you did probably saved his life. He's home, resting comfortably and in fine shape. It was a good deed, Francis. Thank you, Judge. Glad it turned out so well. Oh, uh, by the way, that uh, poem you wrote aboard the cartel ship during the battle? Yeah? I was quite moved by it. I thought it'd be nice if everyone could read and sing it to the tune of uh, To Anacreon in Heaven, as you suggested. Oh, thoughtful of you, Judge. Thank you very much. Well, you're not very happy, Francis. Uh, with Polly away? Well, open the door and look around. Polly. My Francis. Uh, uh, I've missed you so. Oh, my breath. Oh, darling, the door. Oh, I'll fix that. <laughs> uh, it is so wonderful to be home. And now it is for me. When will the children be here? Tomorrow afternoon. Then we can all be together again. Well, this area here is now... I know all about it. Don't worry. The area is safe. Oh, oh, Francis, give me your hand. Come with me. What's this? <laughs> I almost forgot. <laughs> what? Come on. Come in here. I'll open the window. All those people, the lawn is full. 
They're going to sing your song. flag, a banner of courage, a symbol of freedom and democracy, and a great national anthem, born in a crisis of our embattled young republic almost 138 years ago, whose inspired verses are just as stirring, just as hopeful, and just as timely today. Most important message for young women listening to this radio program. If you are between the ages of 18 and 34 and qualify, you can prove that this is a woman's world too. How? By enlisting in the WAF, Women in the Air Force. By joining right now when you're needed most and when the opportunities for advancement are greatest, you will be serving your country well and yourself too. You will have opportunities for some of the finest technical training in the world. Training which will serve you well should you elect to return to civilian life. But most of all, you will have the inner satisfaction of knowing that you are serving your country when the need is urgent. So, do your part in keeping America strong. Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and enlist in the WAF, Women in the Air Force. Do it now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This program featured a cast of outstanding players. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>